Hi, Scouts and Scouters, Tim here, and today we'll be talking about the Robotics Merit Badge and a few tips and tricks on how to build your robot. Alright, let's get started. If you have your manual, open up and uh, we'll, we'll take you through a few things on how to build your robot. First off, we're going to need to choose one sensor. In order to complete the Merit Badge, we have to have a sensor and include sensor feedback as well as programming. So here are a few options. You have the ping sensor, uh, the QTI sensor in the middle, and the push button on the right hand side. Uh, most people are going to be using the push button because it's the cheapest and easiest, um, but uh, there's also a few different reasons you might want to use the other two sensors. You can review those uh, right here. All right, so next step, uh, I'll just brief, brief, briefly Free walk arm. you through Darcy the rest of this. Darcy um, not calibrated. As you can see, you're going to want to get your servos ready. There's a few things to kind of pay attention to. Make sure not to lose this little servo screw here. And this servo horn is what you're going to use to attach the servo, uh, your wheel to the servo. Right? Um, so, for example, on this one, I just used a little lid to uh, cut, trace out a wheel and then build a chassis. Um, here's a few images on how to attach your uh, servo. And a basic layout on how to lay out your servos and wheels. I, for example, I just use hot glue to attach the sensors on. Uh, and then uh, just make sure where you put the sensors. It depends on how you're going to use them. So, for example, I have the push button right here, which you can also see right here, it's just so I can press it here. The ping sensor is on the front, so it will um, see any objects in front of it. And then the QTI sensor is on the bottom. That has to be mounted about half of an inch um, away from whatever surface you're trying to detect. And that's, that's it for building your robot. So after you've done doing that, after you're done building your robot, it's then we're ready to program it. Uh, so there's a few resources you can use, including the Arduino resource guide, uh, which is very helpful. Make sure you get that, um, as well as this, tip, uh, this book right here, Tips and Tricks on How to Build a Robot. I'll help you out. So, uh, for starters, um, you, you'll need to install Arduino. I'll just step you through that real quick. If I go to my Google here, I go to arduino.cc. I'm going to go to this software section and then click on the downloader here. All right. And then you're just going to click just download and wait for it to download. Now, after that's done, you're going to just step through the um, examples. For example, there's going to be an agree page. You're going to run it. There's an agree page. Uh, make sure you install all the drivers. Um, just press next and then click uh, select a location where to download it. Um, and then when you're done, you'll get this little close thing. And then you just launch Arduino. So let's go ahead and do that now. So, yeah, before we get started, there's a few things we want to check. Uh, the first thing is we want to make sure we have the Mind's Eye Libraries installed. To do that, we're going to go to Sketch, Include Libraries, and then Manage Libraries, and type in Mind's, or Mind's Eye. And we're going to want to make sure this library right here, Mind's Eye by Mind's Eye Corp, version 3.0.1, is installed. The version may change, or may be an updated version, but make sure you have the latest version here. After it's installed, it will say in these blue letters, Installed. We can go ahead and close that. One more thing I want to do. Actually, yeah, uh, let's go. First, we'll go to Tools for We want to make sure we're using the Arduino, Genuino Uno in this case. And also, we want to check the port. We can do that by plugging in our robot here, just like this. Do the USB port on here. A few things we're going to want to check right here. Um, basically, Windows is going to automatically install the driver for the, uh, the Arduino. And if that's working, when we go to Tools, now Port will be highlighted, and we can then select this right here. It'll say COM3, Arduino, Genuino, Uno. We want to make sure that's selected. And you can go right here and make sure, just double check that's selected. Also, at the bottom window of Arduino, it'll say Arduino, Genuino, and COM3. That means we're ready to go. Uh, one other step just to help us uh, with communication. If you go to Preferences, File Preferences, 
click on display line numbers here and then press OK that will just display those little line numbers on the side of the sketch just so we can easily communicate what's going on. All right, so the first step we're going to want to do is to find our servos right here. So, um, so for example, this is named my servo, but I'll just go ahead and put right servo and left servo. Make sure it's separated with a comma. And remember the spelling and caps uh, do matter. So then in our void setup, we have to basically attach these two servos. So uh, we have right servo and a left servo. Now this number designates the, the pin that's plugged into. So looking at my Arduino here, I have to make sure that the pins are physically plugged into those numbers that are designated. Right? So if I unplug my wires here, I will see I have two little servo cables here. I'm going to want to plug those into pins 5 and pin 6. And also keep in mind that orientation does matter. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. <clears throat> right. So on this one, on this particular board, let's see if I can just make this a little bigger. You can see that you have yellow, red, and blue pins. So yellow is going to correspond to signal. So in this case, um, just adjust that. So yeah, in this case, um, the orange wires are going to go to the yellow, and then the brown from the servo is going to go to the blue. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now that we have that wired up, we can now just we'll test it and make sure it works. And also keep in mind two pin five and six. Let's see. It's kind of hard to see. But you see, there's a, a little blue strip here. That doesn't count as zero. The next one, with the yellow, red, and blue, is your zero. So count from there up zero, one, two, three, four, and five, right? And then six, and that will be our right and left servo. Let's go back to here. Okay, so next we're just going to set our outputs for that. So we're going to set uh, right servo, dot right and left servo dot right and we're going to put those both at 90 which should be center and we're going to verify this real quick let's see if there are any errors okay so right here we see there is an error detected right here it says expected semicolon before right servo and if i look at my program i can see that i missed the semicolon right here let's verify one more time to see if there's any other errors okay Next is right here. Um, you can see left servo was not declared in the scope. And if you notice this, this S is actually a lowercase, where over here it's, a, it's uppercase. So you might run into a few of these errors while uploading um, or verifying your program, but uh, if you just go through and check it, you should be able to do it. So, all right, so this is done compiling. Now we can upload this by pressing this here. And then it will say done uploading. Now, if this is working, my robot should be going nowhere. So it's kind of hard to tell if it's working. But then now let's change one of the numbers and see what's happened. So I should have my right servo plugged into pin 5. Now I'm checking my wiring here, and it looks like, yes, my right servo is plugged into pin 5. So I'm going to change that to a number um, between 0 and 179. So let's just do 179 and see what happens. And we can see right off the bat that now my right servo is turning. But in this case, it's actually going backwards. So I want it to go forward, so I'm going to type in zero and make the change. All right, so now, now, uh, let me see that. <laughs> All right, now my right servo is going forward. Let's just put it back to 90 for a minute. And just as a reference, we can use comments to 
um, remind us what things are what. So right here, I'm going to add a comment. So write servo, write servo um, 180, or I mean 0 is forward, right? And you can really write whatever you want right here. Just make sure you use the two slashes. Okay, so now, so if uh, right servo 0 is forward, we're going to go here, and we'll also put 0 in the left servo and see what happens. So we're expecting that this will also go forward. Let's just make sure. Oh, but wait, that's going backwards. What, what's the problem? Well, the thing is, since the servos are actually flipped, we have to tell this one a different thing. Let's see. And now it's going forward. So now if I add this one here, put in zero, and press upload, they should be both going forward. Let's see if I can drive this on the table. Let me just grab my camera here. You can see that it is trying to drive forward. All right, there it goes. Always recommend to uh, have an extra, a little bit of extra hot glue. As you can see, my <laughs> stuff is kind of falling apart. All right, let's go back to 90 here. Right here. All right, okay, so both those are stopped. Um, let's just add a note real quick. So we do left servo. We want to make a note, left servo, uh, left forward is 179 is forward. Okay. All right, so then what I would want to do is then kind of calibrate these. Okay, so if I wanted to drive in a straight line, um, maybe what's the slowest speed I can go, right? Um, I'll let you kind of ex experiment with that um, and try to figure out, you know, how fast you want to go depending on what task you want to complete. Okay, and then so also right now we're just powering it from the USB cable, which is enough just to test it. But keep in mind it's going to be maybe a little bit different with the 9-volt battery. So if you have a 9-volt battery, you can throw it on there and then test the program to see if it works. All right, and that's basically it for our server calibration. You can go ahead and save that. And when you save it, I'll say read only, and then you just select the spot right here. And then you can just call whatever you want. This will be handy because then when we go to open, we can just open my servo, which is saved right here at the top. All right, let's take a look at a few sensors and how to calibrate them. Um, I'm going to just pop over to my uh, manual here. I'll show you. How in here, we actually have a few separate sensors, um, like the push button right here. We have the QTI sensor and the uh, ping sensor. And I also threw in another example here for the IR distance sensor. Um, so you can walk through these examples and try to figure out how they work. Um, let's, let me show you one example of how they work. I'll, I'll use the ping sensor because it's really easy to demonstrate. Um, so if we go to, right here we go to open, and then we go to libraries. We're gonna go to mind's eye calibration. Now this is the, the example we were just testing, which is called servo here. Um, and then if we go to Mind's Eye Calibration Ping Sensor, this will be this one here. And uh, now the only difference here, we're going to go through on here, serial.println, we want to get ping, and then we want to make sure our ping sensor is plugged into pin 10. So I'll take my ping sensor here, plug it into 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. <clears throat> and I'm going to upload this. All right, so once that's done uploading, I can open up my serial monitor. And I should start seeing some values come out here. So as you can see, let's see here, my ping sensor is flashing just like that. And what's it doing? It's actually recording a specific value. Uh, depending on the distance that it's away from the sensor. So this is the value we can basically we can write in our code uh, to correspond uh, with what we want to do when it sees an object at a certain distance. All right, so for example, I can go to open or libraries, mind's eye, applications, and then I can then use ping sensor and I can see that this one, for example, says like if get ping, let me make that bigger. 
if 